All right, here we are, tutorial three, and this is the pretty much the final tutorial on getting uh, our drip groove ready on the CNC router using VCarve. So in this one, we're going to use this uh, rectangle and make click it and make it uh, magenta right now. Uh, we're going to use this rectangle and apply a tool path to it. So the cutter of our CNC router. So we're going to click this tab, and I would highly recommend clicking this little thumbtack here because then this won't be flying out all the time, this column. We want to keep this fixed so we can see things. Uh, so in here, we have different kinds of toolpath operations. And there's you can hover over them and they'll tell you what they are. So this is a profile and this is a pocket. If I wanted to hollow something out, this is a drilling toolpath and this is an engraving toolpath. Anyway, various kinds. The one we're going to use is actually a profile toolpath. We're going to follow the profile of something. That's what that is. So we'll click that. And then just like in our job setup, we're going to work all the way down here. Now it looks like a lot, but we'll take it one at a time and it's not that much actually. So the first one it's saying is, where would you like to start? Our starting depth will be our zero, zero point, which we set as the surface of our material in our job setup. So we'll leave this as zero. The cutting depth is now our choice. Um, I am setting it up for 3 16 of an inch deep. So this is 0.1875. If you wanted to go a little shallower, you can go 0.125. That's an eighth of an inch deep. So that's not as deep a groove. So it would be up to you as to how deep a groove you'd like. So I'm gonna stick with 0.1875. And I wouldn't go any deeper than 0.1875. That's plenty deep. Okay, the next part we're gonna to head to, and if this is clicked, uh, you will get less choices. Uh, we would like to see these, so we're just going to click on the advanced and see everything. Now we're going to pick the type of milling bit we're going to use. So we can just call it an end mill quarter inch. And if yours doesn't say end mill quarter inch, then hit select and choose it from up here. There's end mill quarter inch. There's a whole bunch of information you can just ignore for now and push OK. And then you'll, you should have see end mill quarter inch right there. Uh, the number of passes should be two. If it's not, go edit passes change the number of passes down here to two and then hit set passes and push OK. So now you should see two passes. So the cutting bit's going to go around twice to cut this out. It's going to go halfway and then halfway again. The next one we're going to do is, this is really important, we're going to stay on the line. So our cutting bit will stay centered on this line all the way around. So then it won't be cutting to one side or the other, which is sometimes useful, but not this time. So stay on the line. The next one we're going to go down to, do we need to add tabs? Well, if I was going to cut something out completely, I would add little retainer tabs to make sure it didn't fly around as it was getting cut through. But we don't need to add tabs uh, because we're not going to cut out completely. That is pretty much it. That's all we're going to do. Uh, it gets a default name that says profile one. We can accept that and just push calculate. When you do that, it throws you out into a 3D view mode, and it also sets you up to preview things. So you can now say preview all tool paths, and you only have one tool path, but if you click that, you'll see what it's going to do. Now, it did it very fast. You can slow that down, and you can hit reset preview, and then preview all tool paths again, and you can see what the router is about to do. This is the most, the best part of this program is the preview because quite often as we're programming away we're happy to and you can see what i'm doing there i just sort of zoomed in and out with my scroll wheel then i held my left mouse button down and was able to rotate it so i could see it differently uh, so you can see what it's about to do i'll zoom in on that we'll zoom in and pan it over most of the same controls from fusion work with slight variations so this is what's going to happen now our groove is looking like it's flat on the bottom. Don't worry, it won't be because we're going to use a special bit that's rounded. So it's going to have a rounded bottom. But for now, it's just this program thinks we're using a squared off bit. So it's going to make it square on the bottom. But that's it. Um, there we go. Get it back on the screen here. Push the Z straight on. There we go. So this is a preview. This is super important because quite often you get surprises at this point. You think you programmed it to do something. You hit preview and you're like, what? And then you have to go back and change things. If you ever have to change something in your, in your setup, 
you just go and double click this and you're right back in there and you can change anything you want and then when you finish your changes you just hit calculate again and it will recalculate itself and you can hit reset preview and then you can preview it again here i'll slow it right down this time and we'll watch it go around it's very impressive look at that and done okay when you're finished all of this what you're going to do is you're going to save your project file save your vcar project to i would suggest your documents folder you should have a folder inside your documents folder called maker 9 where you're keeping things i won't save this because i don't need this so there we are save it there and then the next thing we're going to do is save it in a way the machine can understand it so we're going to go over here and hit save the tool path and we're going to make sure that we have output all visible tool paths. Uh, you don't have to worry about that, but I mean, you can click it. And then down here, you have to check this tool path that you would like to save. And then we're going to go save tool path. And what you're going to do is you're going to save it to the, you'll, you'll go get the USB stick from the machine. You'll put it in your computer and you'll save it to the USB stick and you'll call it your name. So my name and uh, I don't know, you can, anything after that doesn't matter. But as long as we can identify the file as yours, because on the USB, there will be many files and we're going to have to find yours at the machine. So make sure it's identifiable. So my name, uh, cut, board, there we go. That's what I put there. Well, don't put my name, put your name. Silly. Okay. Uh, that's it. You've got it saved to the USB and now you're going to take it over to the machine and you're going to call it up on the machine. You're going to follow the sheet that's at the machine that walks you through the steps on getting this thing to cut. Hope uh, you have success and that's all for this tutorial series.